From Sasha Alexander wanting showrunners to kill off her character, to Jackie Vance's death being an important one, these are major NCIS characters that were killed off the show and why. Being a part of the original ensemble for a record-breaking show like NCIS is a really big deal and Sasha knows it. She's often said that her role as Caitlin Todd was career-defining. But despite that, she still thinks Todd had to die. In the season 2 finale episode titled Twilight, Todd, being the fearless, sassy, and intelligent special agent that she is, becomes an absolute fan favorite in death. And I get it. A police procedural show where the main characters regularly face off against terrorists, criminals, and drug lords doesn't guarantee that every main character will make it to the next season. But Todd deserved better than being taken out by a sniper rifle, right? It turned out that Hazwari was working as a double agent for Mossad the whole time. And while Caitlin and her team are searching a warehouse for terrorists, Hazwari shoots her with a clean shot right to the dome. Was it shocking? Sure. But was it also lazy? You bet. Fans also thought it was a lazy send-off for a main character like Todd. But it was Sasha who asked showrunners to kill her character off because she couldn't handle the grueling hours anymore. Shooting for 17 hours a day was taking a toll on her health, and she realized that her jam-packed NCIS schedule was preventing her from exploring other things, professionally and personally. Sasha was thrilled to be leaving the show, and she says it's thanks to Agent Todd's death that she was finally able to get married. But behind the scenes, Todd's death had a domino effect. NCIS director Thomas Morrow stepped down, Colonel Jasper Shepard brought in his daughter Jennifer Shepard to take on the role. But after shooting 80 episodes, actress Lauren Holly got bored. Did you know that Lauren initially tried out for the role of Caitlin Todd? Obviously, she didn't make the cut, but when Sasha walked out, showrunner Don Belisario called Holly back in for the role of Jennifer. He told Lauren that Jennifer was supposed to be a temporary character with up to six episodes, but six turned into seven, eight, nine, and before she knew it, Lauren found herself memorizing lines for her 79th episode. And like Sasha, the hours were killing Lauren, who also happened to be a mother of three, and had to travel back and forth to LA for shooting, missing major milestones in her kids' lives. According to Lauren's personal blog, one day she finally realized that she wasn't going to be killed off, because NCIS wanted to make her Gibbs long-term love interest, so she had to pull the plug herself and quit. In the end, while searching for leads on William Decker's murder, Shepard entered a diner and was greeted with a hail of bullets, but before falling to the floor, she scored a few kills of her own. And since I'm on the topic of shocking character deaths, I wouldn't be any good at my job if I didn't talk about the time an MI6 agent was killed by a mugger. Clayton Reeves was an MI6 liaison officer working with the NCIS, and he was played by English actor Dwayne Henry, who joined the show in season 13. And by season 14, he was a series regular. Any guesses on what happened to Agent Reeves in season 15? You got it! He was killed! While protecting fan-fave character Abby Shudo in season 15's Two Steps Back, Reeves was shot by an armed mugger and died a few scenes later. And let me tell you, fans weren't too happy about it. Clayton was basically a highly trained spy, so to have him taken out by some random armed mugger was a letdown for a lot of viewers. One guy who disagrees, though, is Dwayne. He thinks Reeves couldn't have gone out any better than he did, and says showrunners cashed in on his love for Abby, and that taking a bullet for her was a heroic send-off. So Reeves becomes a martyr, instead of just a guy at the wrong place at the wrong time. Over the last 20-some-odd years, NCIS has given us some of the best storylines in television history, and one of them was in season one's Dead Man Talking. It was also the episode where we said goodbye to original cast favorite, Christopher Pachi. Chris was a lone wolf, and while everyone else banded together to solve crime, he'd retreat and study old case files, trying to find new leads in cold cases. In Dead Man Talking, Tim Kelleher's character comes across former Naval Lieutenant Commander Hamilton Voss's case, the guy who stole 10 million bucks before his death. No one knew how he died or where he hid the money, but Chris found something. He traced back the evidence and came across Amanda Reed. And in the twist of the century, Reed was Voss. Yup, the former lieutenant commander had undergone sex reassignment surgery to keep his criminal charade going. Totally crazy. But you've got to appreciate the effort. 
Anyway, Chris, being the fly solo type, went up against a known criminal with no backup, and things didn't end well. Not only did Reed murder him, but she disemboweled him to destroy any leads to her. Man, talk about overkill. Chris's death was gruesome, but at least it added to the storyline. Later on, Tim told fans that he'd gotten an offer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so he asked showrunners to find a way to give his character a proper goodbye. And they were like, you betcha, disemboweling your character's corpse it is. But now it's time for a double feature. Agent Brent Langer's murder made Special Agent Michelle Lee's death all the more thrilling. The main storyline for NCIS Season 6 was that there was a mole inside the agency, and every other episode would point suspicion to a new character. For the longest time, everyone thought that Brent Langer was the mole. Fans were convinced of it, because the guy showed up one day in Season 4 with a keen interest in finding the mole. Which sounds exactly like what a mole would do. Anyway, everyone on NCIS was waiting for the big reveal. But if there's one thing I've learned in my years of binging NCIS episodes, it's that nothing's what it seems. In Season 6's Last Man Standing, Langer discovers who the actual mole is, and it turns out to be Michelle Lee, the last person anyone had expected. For whatever reason, Langer decides to confront her on his own, and to no one's surprise, the special agent who'd been feeding classified information to the outside shot Langer like it was no big deal. But if you ask me, his death was necessary, because it only made it more exciting when Gibbs caught up to Lee's charade and had her confess to what she'd done before, you know, shooting her. NCIS has it all, it makes us laugh, leaves us shaken, and even makes us cry. Reminds me of the time I was left sobbing after Emily Fornell's death. The young recurring cast member was introduced as Diane Sterling, an agent Tobias Fornell's only daughter in season four. Fans adored her right off the bat, and it helped that she made the often cold Leroy Gibbs laugh. Her next appearance came in season 11, and it was clear that she grew up a lot, was as witty as her mom and as smart as her dad. But hey, it's NCIS, and they couldn't let us be happy with her for long. After a series of copycat killings, Diane ends up getting killed much like Caitlin Todd, and Emily has such a hard time coping with the loss that she turns to drugs and things go downhill fast. Gibbs and Tobias try to help, but she's too far gone by then. And in season 18's Winter Chill, fans were devastated to learn that Emily died of an opioid overdose. Her death was pivotal for Gibbs. It hit close to home and made him reevaluate how he'd been keeping people at a distance for too long. Another character whose death left us in tears but was also necessary for another major character's arc was Jackie Vance's death. If you ask me, season 10 was an absolute bloodbath, but the deadliest episode was without a doubt, Shabbat Shalom. The director of Mossad comes over to negotiate peace talks with Arash Kazmi and has Leon Vance there for good measure. Leon's wife Jackie's there too, and her death was a brutal gut punch. While the shootout that killed Woods in that episode was thrilling, fans saw it coming. He was a powerful guy with a lot of enemies, and someone definitely wanted him dead. But why did they have to kill Jackie? She was only preparing a meal for everyone, and it was all so senseless. The showrunners didn't just kill her off with a single bullet either. They made us painfully watch the next few scenes, where she's rushed to the hospital in critical condition as Leon winces in pain, with everyone at home clutching their hearts, hoping she makes it. Even though Jackie died in the most painful way possible, her death was necessary, because it launched Leon into full gear. So, from Jackie Vance's death being an important one, to Sasha Alexander wanting the showrunners to kill off her character, those were major NCIS characters killed off the show and why?